Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my newest members. Thank you, Song777774, for becoming a member. Members get perks, shout outs in my videos, as well as they get to see the thumbnail before the video premieres. So let's get started. We do have an algebraic expression and we're going to simplify it. So we have a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3abc divided by the sum of the squares of a minus b, b minus c, and c minus a. So how do we simplify something like this? You know, there's a couple ways to do it. And if you are dealing with a multiple choice problem, obviously, a lot of times people are just going to substitute some values for a, b, c, and try to get that in the choices as well. But this is not a multiple choice problem. We have to simplify it to the simplest form. Now, the answer could be a number or the answer could be a polynomial in this case. But if you kind of look at it carefully, you're going to notice that the numerator is cubic while the denominator is quadratic, which means or which makes us think that the answer is going to be linear. So how do we factor the numerator and the denominator? First of all, notice that the denominator is a sum of squares. So we're going to leave it at that for now. Let's go ahead and focus on the numerator. Now, this expression is factorable, in case you didn't know, and it's kind of interesting. This polynomial comes up a lot, and there's a lot of nice applications of it as well. And we've seen, you've seen this in some of my other videos. I don't know if you remember or if you've seen them. But anyways, let's get started. So, I have some kind of sum of cubes here. So, I'm going to try to take advantage of that. I have a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed and then minus 3abc. Now, to be able to factor this, I'm going to be uh, using some identities. So allow me to write these two as a sum of two cubes in a different way. So I'm going to be using the, obviously the, what's it called, the binomial theorem here. So if I write it as a plus b quantity cubed minus 3ab times a plus b. Obviously when you subtract these, you're going to get a cubed plus b cubed. And then I'm going to be adding plus c cubed or maybe... Uh, okay, I'm just going to do it this way and then, you know, separate them later. Now, notice that what I did was just manipulate this part, but it gave me something real nice. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, right now, notice that we have a plus b quantity cubed along with c cubed here and here. So that's kind of like a sum of two cubes. And if you look at the rest of the terms, you're going to notice that they, they contain a common factor. So we can just go ahead and separate these terms and factor. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to separate these two, put it together like this. And then these two terms, since they have a common factor of negative 3ab, I'd like to take that out. And then that gives me a plus b plus c. Because I took out a negative sign, I can write it as a plus c. Okay. Now, does that look familiar? Hopefully it does. Now, if it doesn't, we can still work on this and... I'm going to factor this part. I'm going to factor this part as a sum of two cubes. Now, let's go ahead and quickly remember what the sum of two cubes looks like. Uh, well, if you have something like x cubed plus y cubed, we can write it as x plus y times the quantity x squared minus xy plus y squared. Don't underestimate the power, of the power of this identity. It's very, very powerful. It's used a lot in different situations. And this is one of them. So if you just consider this an x, you have something like x cubed plus c cubed, and we can factor it as follows. So we're going to write the first term plus the second term, which is c. And then the second factor is going to involve x squared. Remember, x is a plus b in this case, so we're going to write it as a plus b quantity squared minus, we're supposed to multiply a plus b times c, so I can write the c first, c times the quantity a plus b, and finally we end up with y squared, which is in this case c squared. Now that's just the first part, so I'm just factoring this part because it's not going to fit here. But allow me to do that. Once I simplify, I'm going to bring this in and we'll put it all together. Okay? But notice that we already got an a plus b plus c, so that's kind of nice. So now from here we're getting a plus b plus c. And what about the second factor? Let's go ahead and expand it completely. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus ac minus bc plus c squared. Okay, now, this is kind of interesting. It's It doesn't look very symmetrical, but notice that we're going to bring those two together and it's going to be nicer that way. So here, we can kind of rearrange this a little bit. 
write the squares first. So it looks like the following a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And then I have plus 2ab minus ac minus bc. So that is this part right here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this one in as well. And let's see what happens after that. So I have a plus b plus c multiplied by a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2ab minus ac minus bc. And then I'm supposed to subtract from it minus 3ab times the quantity a plus b plus c. Again, it comes from here. Okay. And then what we're going to do here is since a plus b plus c is a common factor, we're going to take that out. Let's go ahead and do that. a plus b plus c is a common factor. And then the other factor is going to be made up of a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2ab minus ac minus bc minus 3ab. I know this kind of looks complicated, but notice that it's going to simplify real nice. So now I have, I have a plus b plus c multiplied by a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Now notice that 2ab minus 3ab gives you negative ab, which kind of makes our expression nicer here. Because notice that everything like ab, ac, bc, they all come with the same coefficient, which is nice. Now notice that we are supposed to simplify an expression here. So let's go ahead and go back to the original. Now we do have an expression that is a quotient. So we're going to divide the top by the bottom and we're going to simplify our answer. Let's see what that's going to look like when we put it all together. But one of the interesting findings about this is that the top, the a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3abc is divisible by a plus b plus c, which is fairly interesting. And you can definitely prove this. For example, you can replace a with negative b minus c and you're going to notice that the top becomes zero that way. So you can kind of think of it as a poly polynomial in a single variable and the others are constants. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and replace the top with what we have here and then the bottom and then we're going to process it all together. So the numerator of my expression is going to be this because I had a fraction, right? And then the denominator is going to be a minus b quantity squared plus b minus c quantity squared plus c minus a quantity squared. It doesn't have to be that order, but you know, they all have to be kind of different. Now, notice that as is, I can't really simplify anything, so I kind of have to expand the bottom now. Let's go ahead and do that right now. a plus b plus c multiplied by a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus ab minus ac minus bc divided by. Now, if you go ahead and expand this, you're going to get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared plus b squared minus 2bc plus c squared plus c squared minus 2ac plus a squared. And what happens after this is you can just go ahead and, you know, add like terms and let's see what we get from here. That the result is going to be pretty interesting. Okay. The bottom is going to look like the following a squared plus b squared plus c squared. But notice that they come twice. So we kind of have like 2a squared plus 2b squared plus 2c squared. And then I got the negative 2ab minus 2ac minus 2bc. And does that look familiar? If it doesn't, let's see what that is going to give us. So now what happens at the bottom is we can factor out a 2. I hope you've seen that. So what I can do here is I can basically just pull out a 2 and I'm going to be getting one of the factors in the numerator, which is super duper nice. So I can just factor out this gigantic term and I end up with a plus b plus c divided by 2. Now at this point you might be wondering like what if the expression at the bottom is 0? And let me tell you something. If a, b, c are different, they're not all 0, or if they're not all equal, then the bottom is not going to be 0. So let me say that this is going to be true under certain conditions. I know some people are not going to like that expression, but that's just what it is. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.